There was recently an opinion piece in the New York Times about a very interesting court case going on in the state of Kansas. And what happens in Kansas affects what happens across the country. This has to do with school finances. Kansas, like Arizona and many other states, slashed their education funding during the recession. The cuts in Kansas amounted to 16.5% from 2008. In Arizona, they were 21.8%. As a result, they have seen the same things in Kansas that we have seen here in Arizona. Much higher class sizes, teacher layoffs, schools closing, programs cut. So a group of parents got together in Kansas and filed a lawsuit against the state and arguing that the state must improve its funding levels in order to comply with that state's constitution. Now, Kansas has a provision in its constitution which requires that the state have a suitable provision for financing public education. The parents there are arguing that Kansas has violated that provision with the severe cuts that were made there by its governor and state legislature. Now, Arizona has perhaps an even more tightly written provision in, in our constitution, which is Article 11, Section 10, and it specifically requires that through taxation, the Arizona legislature provide for the development and improvement of our public schools. Now, Arizona does not have a current pending lawsuit on the questionable issue as to whether the state cuts here violate the state's constitution. But all eyes are on Kansas right now because there actually are 11 other states that do have similar con uh, legal contests going on at the moment, including New York, Florida, Texas, and California. Now, the case in Kansas is the closest to actually meeting a resolution because it's now before their state Supreme Court. So we will be watching that very closely. An interesting uh, statistic that was also in this article talked about the fact that 45 states have had to resort to lawsuits challenging the failure of governors and legislatures to adequately fund education as required by their constitutions. So this is not, unfortunately, a new problem. The recession has exacerbated a problem and made it far worse than it has been in the past. Now, when you talk to people who are not familiar with Arizona's history, they assume that we have always been one of the you know, lowest funded public education systems in the country. And that is absolutely not the case. In fact, exactly the opposite was true for many, many, many years. Arizona's constitution, which was written in 1912, is one of the most progressive constitutions in the country. And in order to join the union, we had to agree to the provision to adequately fund education. But it didn't stop there for Arizona. And I want to read to you a quote that um, Dave found in a very interesting uh, historical uh, piece of literature. It was written in 1940. It's called Arizona, A State Guide. It was a WPA um, per, uh, publication that was compiled by workers of the Writers Program. And here's what it said about Arizona in 1940. Among political and economic lives, a great majority of Arizonans are liberal-minded, almost to the try-anything-once point. One direction their liberal liberalism takes is toward provisions for popular education that might seem extravagant considering population and taxable wealth. Arizona people insist that schools be of the best, regardless of cost. Parents who never went beyond the grammar grades are determined that their children shall have university diplomas. So this is the Arizona legacy that I think, especially those of us whose parents, whose grandparents, whose great-grandparents grew up in this state, remember. And so when did things start to go south? Well, it really happened in the 80s. The 80s, especially the late 80s, were a very bad uh, period of time for education in Arizona. In the 70s, we had always been in the middle of the pack in terms of what we spent per child, um, the average spent per pupil on the national scale, and then we started to plummet. And so what happened? 
Well, two things happened at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s. In 1990, Governor Fife Symington was elected and he was our Republican legislator, re Republican governor for the following seven years until he had to step down from office under criminal indictment. And in 1992, citizens passed an initiative that required a two-thirds supermajority to increase taxes in Arizona. That's when this all started to go south. And just so everyone knows, back when Arizona was founded, back up and through the mid to late 70s, we were a state that proudly supported its schools.